41 years, I am on two wheels in Himalayas. When we were doing the Kaveri calling ride in uh, 2019, uh, towards the end of the ride, Sadhguru was saying that uh, in the next year and or two, he will be doing this Himalayan rally and all of us should, should join him. So that was a uh, kind of an invitation. Last two and a half years, you know, I was dreaming that, you know, Kedar is calling me and I had a calling from inside that I wanted to go to Kedar. And the moment I got that Sacred Box is doing a Himalayan trip, it was not even a second thought, I just registered at the moment. Just like, it's almost like coming back into your mother's womb. Visiting Himalayas is uh, definitely a seeker's dream. Nothing uh, is bigger right now in, uh, for me in this life uh, to explore this place with the master himself. We had just planned to buy a bike, so depending on what kind of bike suits this terrain, we bought the bike just before the Yatra, just for the Yatra. gave us his blessings. That itself is a boost for our motorcycle. This is a land where more people invested their life in deeper pursuits of life than on the surface for a long time. So spiritual process means you want to touch the core element of who you are. Especially when I thought I would be like, you know, riding with, uh, along with the group and Sadhguru, it was something, I think my heart just missed too many beats, not just one. And I said, I have to do this because I don't know when this opportunity would come again. Well, today morning, 26th September, we left from uh, Delhi, nine motorcycles. <laughs> So we are on the way to Jim Corbett National Park. From here it's full straight, no turning. Full straight, I should not turn. Yeah, no. Go straight. Even if you're turning, I should not turn. Uh, so I didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> We had a fantastic ride today, what a ride, uh, it was all uh, nature in its extreme glory. So it's a beautiful scenic uh, ride which we had and I think all the riders enjoyed it uh, very much. Especially when we did the last 50 kilometers, the, the scenery was awesome, we were just riding into the uh, forest and the roads were the even uh, yeah. exhilarating off-roads. The riding in this terrain is uh, really nice, but in Sadhguru's company, it's out of the world, like it's fantastic. I had very little sleep last night, I thought I'll fall asleep driving, but 
Just when we entered the forest, it was so refreshing and recharging. All my tiredness went away. We crossed a few streams. We had a fantastic time. It was fast, it was slow, at places it was risky, but it was fun. Namaskaram. 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 Who are you? Sudha. I am still trying to find out. Sudha. <laughs> It seems like we were doing some traveling during the day and then we would get to a place at night. We have no idea what the place looks like or what. And then you wake up in the morning in the in the daytime and you're in the middle of mountains, jungle, greenery, beauty, fog. Himalayan trip uh, with some 700, 800 rupees in my pocket probably. Those days I would never stay in any resort. My resort was on the roadside or on the motorcycle. So, <laughs> there was no destination, simply very Seeing India, Bharat. So Bharat beats in my heart like you can't imagine. It's not like a country, it's like an experience. Well, the moment you enter or pass through Hardwar means you have entered the gates of Shiva. That's what it means. My navigator. From the Jim Corbett National Park, uh, today we have a uh, lunch stopover at uh, Patanjali Yoga Peach, meeting Baba Ramdev and Acharya Balakrishna. Uh, in front of all of you, I am uh, making sure Balakrishna Ji and uh, Baba are uh, both becoming planet partners with me. Hello? So they, all, they already said yes all the time. Sadhguru Ji always talking in Hindi and I am always talking <laughs> in English. <laughs> We are uh, going to Dehradun. So we have an event with the Chief Minister of Uttarakhand and with his cabinet and his officers. From there back to Rishikesh, rest through the night and we are into the folds, endless folds of Himalayan lap. There we are. this part of the mountain for twenty-seven years continuously. I didn't come here looking for any spirituality or anything, simply the magnetic nature of the mountains. But uh, usually a mountain man means a wild man, but these mountains tame me and discipline me many ways. The very fact that I'm still alive is because I discipline myself with the mountains. Otherwise, you won't survive. This morning, like it was really fantastic. Uh, Sadhguru uh, met all the bikers, including me.
j'ai de la mienne, je suis chiffre. Do not try to ride like somebody else. Never do that. We will ride to you this thing. If you're coming late, we will stop and wait. Okay? From here on, uh, it's more challenge to the rider than the motorcycle. part of being on two wheels is slowly your attention becomes very keen, otherwise you won't live long. It's very simple. <laughs> you… you may be a safe rider, that means you're not a rider. Because the idea of floating around on two wheels is to push the boundaries. Not that you have to unnecessarily take risks, but you are pushing the boundary. Just coming to an altitude and elevation of the mountain is not good enough. You must become elevated. This life is always longing to break its barriers. Spiritual process need not be taught. If you just bring down your transactions, it will just burst forth. Two rivers uh, merging into each other, it was the Alaknanda and uh, Mandakini. From there, actual, our actual temple trips started. So every temple we went to, we uh, did regular darshan and then afterwards uh, all us meditators, uh, you know, sat by the temple and meditated for uh, twenty, thirty minutes. One way or the other, uh, it was a very strange surge of energy and you could feel the intensity at a different level. We went to uh, Agastya Ashram. I had a chance to meditate inside the shrine. I had a very, very, very intense experience and uh, within a couple of minutes of even just sitting there, I think uh, my body felt uh, completely different. I feel the whole place just reverberating. This morning we went to Rudraprayag confluence, the Prayag, and uh, it is a confluence of two tributaries of uh, Ganga River. But once all the participants went, we sneaked in and took a dip and that dip was incredible. It, it, it was like we were taking a dip in Tirthakur. It was that energizing. Looking at just the Prayags, the Sangam of two rivers, even though we have heard that there is Mandakani, there is Alaknanda, there is Pindar, there are so many Prayags. But every single place, if we just sit quietly, it gave a sense of beyond what I'm doing everyday life. The idea of pilgrimage is you must become like nothing after pilgrimage. If that is not possible, at least something little less than what you thought you were. That's the idea coming into the mountains. This is what pilgrimage means. Not because you're going up a mountain. This is just to realize that this day is the most important day in my life. Because I'm alive this day, not another day. The biggest things that need to happen to me need to happen to me now, this day. So, this is pilgrimage. If you're like this, you're always on a pilgrimage. The 
Takashi is uh, very significant to me. It's a tremendous place. This is a place where Sadhguru Sri Brahma stayed for a period of time. So we've been there and every time we are in Himalayas, we've always been there. You know what Gupta Kashi means? It's a secret Kashi, so don't tell anybody. Uh, Gupta Kashi is a powerful, powerfully consecrated place and it was in a, a certain state of dilapidation because it's a really uh, energy-wise quite a spectacular place. Just to have that opportunity to experience and be in those same spaces where our Guru has been was so overwhelming which I don't think, uh, you know, would have been possible ever. Such fury. So Shiva was lying on, the, on her path. So she also cut him up. Then she felt a deep sense of regret and kind of shame and then settled down here. The lower half of the body got established here as the Kali Mat. So when she's in fury, she is not only destroying her enemies, anybody who comes in the way, things that are precious to her also. This is a depiction to show that once your passions rise beyond a certain point, you will destroy what's most dear to you, your own life. We uh, were able to visit the temple, we had uh got to do Guru Puja there and um, took us through a process and the energy was so intense there. So we visited a very special place called Gopeshwara and in that there's a special Shiva temple called Gopinath temple. Badrinath is so much energy, there is not one person who can go by without feeling the energy. This was bound to happen. I was not supposed to come in. One idea of coming into the mountains is, if you had walked up, if you looked up, you would know you're mortal. You're here just as a life, not even as a human being, just as a life. If you can be here just as a life, you will see, you will go as an enhanced life. The best way you will organize your life, if you understand there's a very limited amount of time, you would organize your time the way it matters to this life, isn't it? If 
there is a one place that is geometrically congruent with the sound Shiva, it's Kedar. You are not in Himalayas just to enjoy the natural beauty. Well, it is spectacularly beautiful, but that's not the only point. Uh, at least some taste of something you must take with you. Even if you don't eat, at least you must smell. If you cannot even distinguish the smell of one thing from the other, we don't know what you will consume in your life. These are the places where you need to pawn your senses to know what is what. Where is the fragrance of divine? Where is the filth of life? You should come to that kind of sensitivity. These are good places to do that. I saw Kedar temple, just broke down. I just felt like I was waiting to uh, do the darshan. And another part is Sadhguru already went. I mean, I don't know whether he went into the temple or not, but he was with the participants. And that's something I wanted for myself, and it didn't happen. And even with Sadhguru behind, no expectation, just sitting with His grace, the Divine, the Divinity was coming down. By noon time, everybody should be ready, we're going to walk down. Me too. All of us were excited because Sadhguru said, I'm trekking back with you. It was unbelievable. However, now when we're going down, I think he's carrying all of it. I don't feel a bit of tiredness or heaviness of breath, nothing. Thank you for all the service you're doing here. It's wonderful. I'm climbing by reading a book, The Near Engineering. We are so blessed to, Good to see you here. Yeah. We are proud that we have a people like this. If you are not in a transactional mode, you will see, you will be naturally become attention to life. If you pay enough attention, 
you will realize how small and fragile a life you are, especially in the mountains. It comes home strong. When you really understand the nature of your existence, you are a speck of life in the middle of a limitless cosmos. You are a pilgrim. This, whatever this ten, twelve days is a start-up. After that you must continue the pilgrimage, your life should be a pilgrimage, that all the time you're growing into a bigger possibility. That is not only a twelve-day trip, that must be life. Best experience I've ever had in my life. This trip was something different. This was right from day one, this was a roller coaster ride. Because since I was a child, I always wanted to go to Himalayas, I don't know why. And uh, my dad did not take me, but my guru, you know, made this possible. How my perspective needs to change to more inward instead of more outward. And the lightness that comes with that, the freedom that comes with that, I'm going to take that home with me this time. May you touch many peaks in your life. Not necessarily mountain peaks, there are many peaks of human consciousness, you must touch them. Gratitude all the volunteers who work ceaselessly to make this happen. Anywhere you stop, people on the road suddenly randomly come, stop and take blessings from Sadhguru. Not just come and take. Yesterday there was a guy who just rode in between us on an activa for almost 100 kilometers, matching our speed. We thought he's just racing or he's trying to be cool being in between the bikes or something. Later we realized when we stopped, he was just coming there to touch his feet. He did not even ask for a picture. So, uh, this has been such a humbling experience because there are so many people, they were meant to meet him and uh, they have been meeting him in different, different, different ways. <laughs> For those of you who are willing, I will be available to you in more ways than you understand. Keeping yourself willing is your business.